Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, trolls and derps alike, welcome, welcome all I am. Mullet Mike with the pedal and full screen bringing you Creepy Gaming. For those unfamiliar, this is the series where we take a look at various creepy video game aspects, ranging from, but not limited to, weird easter eggs, disturbing backstories, urban legends, and the occasional creepypasta. As this video drops, we are currently celebrating six years of creepy gaming. There have been over 100 episodes, hours upon hours of content, and I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who have supported me throughout this journey. To mark this special occasion, we are going to hearken back to an older Season 1 episode. Mind you, this isn't a revisit, but rather a subtle celebration, because today we will be talking about the original Max Payne. So, without any further ado, turn the lights down and the volume up as we journey into some creepy gaming. Sometimes it can be hard to appreciate what you got. It's in our nature to want what we don't have. It's also in our nature to not know how much we appreciate something until it's gone. This is one of the major themes of the Max Payne franchise. The series was first developed by Remedy Entertainment and distributed by Rockstar Games. Max Payne harkens back to older noir-style detective stories, but was much darker and grittier. The story is narrated by Max himself, while the cinematics are shown in comic book style panels. The game gets disturbing as soon as you press start. Life was good. The sun setting on a sweet summer's day. The smell of freshly mowed lawns. The sounds of children playing. The house across the river on the Jersey side. A beautiful wife and a baby girl. The American dream come true. Honey, I'm home. But dreams have a nasty habit of going bad when you're not looking. The sun went down with practice bravado. Twilight crawled across the sky, laden with foreboding. Michelle, honey, anybody home? I didn't like the way the show started. But they'd give me the best seat in the house, front row center. What the hell? Michelle! No, 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 God, no, please, Michelle. Oh, baby. Told you it gets dark! This tragic opening sets the tone for what's to come and explains Mac's balls-to-the-wall attitude. There's nothing more frightening than a scorned man with nothing to lose. Well, except maybe for the bizarre trip Max takes down memory lane, but more on that in a minute. 
As the game continues, Payne finds out that the guys that killed his wife and kid were on some new street drug known as Valkyr. This title makes many subtle allusions to Norse and Celtic mythology. Hmm, I think I see a pattern here. Valkyr, the street drug, obviously gets its name from the Valkyries. There's also this bizarre satanic cult in the game that sets up at this nightclub. What's the name of their hangout? Well, Ragnarok, of course! So, as you see, this game deals with some pretty disturbing aspects, but this is nothing compared to what we're about to deal with. In part one, The American Dream, we jump forward to three years after Max loses his family. Being the detective he is, Payne gets a lead on where the Valkyr has been coming from. He goes undercover to get to the bottom of this and to avenge his family. To make matters worse, his friend and colleague Alex gets shot mysteriously in the early chapters. Now Max really has nothing to lose. Or so he thinks. In the opening of part two, a cold day in hell, Max gets drugged, and what follows can only be described as a nightmare. I really don't know any other word for it. What starts out as a bullet time filled third person shooter changes into a straight up horror game seemingly out of nowhere. This is what many players refer to as the nightmare level. Quick disclaimer before we watch this. While not featuring any screamers or jump scares, this gameplay does contain loud screams and disturbing content. Hell, even for this show. I have not added or tampered with the gameplay in any way other than a few short edits where I cut out some minor cutscenes only for time. Other than that, this really happens in the game. Holy shit. Viewer discretion is advised. The nightmare was always the same. Violent shapes moving in darkness, old and ugly. The killer's mad laughter was a riddle filled with wicked innuendo. Somewhere, the baby was crying. Should have known it when we found you snoring next to Lupino's corpse. A comedian, eh? The pictures were filled with good old times. Cartoons. Captain Baseball Bat Boy is my favorite.
No. No, no, please, God, no. Blow them to bits, vaporize them, disintegrate them. No matter what you do, they'll still be back good as new. Max! No, please, Max! Why? I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Nothing like that ever happens in the real world. I'll never forget playing this for the first time as a kid. It was horrifying. It still is. Where did this come from? Now mind you, the game is broken up into three acts. This happened at the beginning of part two. You've already played a third of this game before even getting to this, this, I don't even know what to call it. Thus why it has been referred to as the nightmare level. Many games have done this before, ranging from Batman Arkham Asylum to the Far Cry series, but Max Payne was definitely one of the first. And yes, while this isn't exactly a family-friendly title, it's still such an unexpected departure and turn of events from when the hallways begin to stretch and those screams. Those damn screams. Between the illusions, the Norse mythology, the satanic cult, and the aforementioned nightmare level, Max Payne has done more than enough to earn its spot into creepy gaming history. It's crazy to think about, but nearly six years ago from this video's release, we were discussing the Demon Baby or Curie Pura from the then newly released Max Payne 3. Now here we are, six years later, discussing the demons that originally haunted Max Payne in the first place. I would like to thank you all again for the support and helping me get to live my dream. Whether my videos have 2,000 views or 2 million views, it doesn't matter. If I have entertained you in the least bit, then I feel like I have done my job. I want to thank you again for six years of creepy gaming. Plenty more to come. I am Mullet Mike with us out on full screen saying Stay creepy. Thanks as always for watching. Peace.